what is the big deal with plagiarism? Um, it's actually a pretty big deal because academic honesty standards are really one of the major reasons why academic work is considered more trustworthy than something that you get in a popular press. Um, you know, when you're when you're looking for sources and and eventually will. Uh, hopefully have a presentation similar to this about evaluating sources. Uh, but peer review is one thing that's very important in the academic world because it keeps us honest. And academic honesty is really important because that's what gives us integrity and credibility. Um, in some cases, plagiarism can result in copyright infringement or violations of intellectual property, which can lead to legal problems. Uh, you can actually get in legal trouble if you uh, infringe on someone's copyright. Uh, you may work on something in college and not realize uh, that it's going to be a big deal later on, that, that uh, someone might actually use this, because you're doing academic work, and um, that, that means something. Um, so we need to uphold that standard. Avoid taking credit for other people's ideas, and this is really the bottom line here, um, by citing your sources. That is the way that you, the best way to avoid plagiarizing. Why should you cite sources? Well, obviously, I just said that it's a really good way to avoid uh, plagiarizing, but why is it so important to that? Um, well, it's important to give credit to the person whose ideas you used just as you would want credit if someone used your ideas. Um, it makes sense. If you come up with an idea, you want credit for it, and so do other people. Um, identifying your sources allows readers to retrieve those sources for their own use. Um, you can see that right there, I happen to have that in quotes, um, and that is a quote from uh, the website cited down at the bottom, Western Oregon University Library. Um, they, they use those exact words, so either whether you're paraphrasing something or whether you are quoting something, um, you need to tell them, tell readers or uh, consumers of your information in some way where that information originally came from. Um, because if you were curious about what this Western Oregon University Library listed down there in the bottom, if you were curious about that website, you could go to that website and you could find that they have a really great video um, about uh, citing sources and why it's important. Um, backing up your work with other sources makes your work stronger and more authoritative. Um, not doing it or doing it wrong makes your work lose credibility. Um, basically, it just it gives you a stronger argument. If you cite your sources and you can back them up with reputable authoritative sources especially, um, then it, it makes your uh, argument stronger. So that makes it really important. Um, but another reason it's important, some people don't just want the positive side of it, some people need the negative as well, uh, or the uh, the they need some reason to compel them uh, to do the right thing. And so here are uh, what those things are at the university. Um, there are consequences for plagiarism, and they can include any of the following. Um, you can fail the entire course that you have uh, taken um, in which you plagiarized. Um, and that is the punishment for the first offense. And if you uh, have other offenses, then it can extend beyond that to removal from honors programs, um, dismissal from your major, dismissal from your school or college, and expulsion from the university um, is the big one. You can actually get kicked out of the school for plagiarizing. Um, so it's no small deal. How do you avoid plagiarism? Because I think we have established that it's probably something you want to avoid. So, um, again, from the, uh, the student uh, academic honor code, students are responsible. That means you are the one who is responsible for educating yourself as to the proper mode of attributing credit in any course or field. Faculty may use various methods to assess the originality of students' work, such as plagiarism detection software. I can tell you that faculty is actively trying to find out if work is being plagiarized uh, to make sure that you're not copying something uh, from Wikipedia, from uh, some some website where you can buy papers uh, or just 
pulling the information from somewhere else. Um, it, it's a problem and it's something that uh, the university is actively working to fight against. Um, but as that first part says, uh, students are the ones responsible um, for figuring out how they need to uh, properly attribute um, where they got their information, properly citing those sources. Um, so talk to your professors if you're ever not sure because the method that you use to cite your source will change according to what course you're in and what area of of uh, academic discipline you're in. Plagiarism can occur either deliberately or unintentionally. Um, you can accidentally, you can plagiarize by negligence. Uh, and basically that happens by being lazy about it. Uh, so don't be lazy. Um, be thorough. Be thorough about your research. Um, be thorough about uh, when you're when you're reading along. Don't wait until uh, you've finished your paper to try and pull together your bibliography uh, because you may have returned some books to the library already. You may not have bookmarked all your sites. Uh, so it's really a good idea to keep track of those things as you go along. Uh, keep good track of all sources you use while you're researching. Um, use note cards or a citation management software like RefWorks or EasyBib to keep track of the quotations and ideas that you are using, um, whether you're quoting them or paraphrasing them. Keep track of that so you don't accidentally think you're paraphrasing when you're actually quoting. Um, keep good track of all these things because uh, that can help you um, avoid accidentally plagiarizing in addition to doing it deliberately. Um, if you're not sure, always err on the side of caution. If you're not sure something is plagiarism, um, always always play it safe. Um, always cite your sources. If you're not sure if something is your idea or if it's someone else's, try and see if you can find out where you might have gotten it from and, and cite a source there. Um, there's more information uh, about citation styles, uh, the specifics, um, at, at one of our LibGuides, universityofdayton.edu, uh, libguides.udayton.edu slash citing sources. Um, and that can give you a whole lot more information about the details of citing sources. So, back to our examples in the beginning. Are these people committing plagiarism? Let's revisit and see. So first we had Megan, of course. Megan summarized a chapter from her psychology textbook in the introduction to her psychology research paper, but doesn't cite the source since it is the class textbook. What do you think? Is it plagiarism? Is it not plagiarism? Is it maybe plagiarism? Um, the answer is it's plagiarism. Anytime you are summarizing or paraphrasing someone's work, even if it is the textbook for the class that you are in, you must cite your source to avoid plagiarizing. Uh, next we have Josie's roommate, Kelly is helping her with an assignment for astronomy since Kelly already took the class. Is that plagiarism? What do you think? Well, I will tell you, it's not so cut and dry. It could be plagiarism. The situation really depends on how Kelly is helping and how much she helps with the assignment. Getting some help from a friend is probably not plagiarism. But it could be if Josie references any of Kelly's work, uh, she needs to cite Kelly as a source to avoid plagiarizing. Um, of course, if she was planning on citing Kelly as a source, uh, she'd probably benefit more from finding a more authoritative source than Kelly, uh, her roommate. Um, but, you know, if that's what she's going to do, play it safe and cite that source. When in doubt, Josie probably is going to want to consult with her professor about the assignment expectations. Uh, the professor may not want her working with someone else, not getting, not want her getting help. She, they may want uh, Kelly to or Josie to work it out on her own. Uh, but if she's confused, you know, uh, generally if it's uh, it's the kind of thing where you need some guidance, you need to talk through it. That's that's probably going to be okay. Uh, it just depends on how far it goes. Then we have Eric working on a paper for an environmental chemistry class. His aunt, an environmental chemist, helps him with the assignment by sending him some data from her research. Is that a no-no? What do you think? Well, it could be plagiarism. The fact that she sent him data is not a problem. Um, as long as Eric 
properly cites the data from his aunt, he can totally avoid plagiarizing. Uh, if he includes it as his own data, that of course would be plagiarism. If he doesn't say this is uh, Dr. Eric's aunt uh, and credits her properly. Um, he may need to consult with a librarian about the best way to properly give his aunt credit for her work. Um, that's probably best used as something anecdotal because in most scholarly work uh, you wouldn't cite something that isn't already published. Um, so it just really kind of depends on the situation there um, and that's more an issue of whether or not it's an appropriate source. Uh, but um, the bottom line is if he cites it and does his best to cite it properly, he can avoid plagiarizing in that situation. And finally, Jake is rushing to finish up a literature paper. He can't remember which page numbers he found some of the information on, so he guesses about the page numbers when creating his parenthetical citations. Hopefully you're going to get this one because this one is flat out plagiarism. Jake is falsifying his citations so that they do not point to where he actually got his information. Um, if somebody wanted to find where he found that information, they look to that page, they're not going to find what he uh, used, what he quoted or paraphrased there. Um, everybody makes mistakes um, and you're not uh, probably going to uh, get a failing grade just because you put the wrong page number down in, in an instance or two. But citing page numbers that just regularly don't relate to uh, the content would be pretty difficult for Jake to explain and justify, so I, he would not probably get away with that. Um, and so that is a great overview of how you can avoid plagiarism. Um, the bottom line there, the most important thing to remember is cite your sources. Um, you can always, always, always talk to your professor about how they prefer sources be cited, what sort of citation style, um, and always feel comfortable coming to the library and talking to any of the librarians there who are happy to help you figure out uh, the um, good guides for uh, citing sources, um, figure out particularities of certain odd, awkward sources that you're not sure how to, uh, how to fit into the, the, your citation style. Um, and thanks very much for listening. On um, one final note, the only thing I have left is uh, I would be amiss if I didn't include my references here, um, my bibliography, uh, for where I did research to put together this presentation. Um, so some of these sources might also be helpful for you. Um, please feel free to refer to any of these URLs. Um, and thank you so much.